Good morning and welcome back to Doncaster, another disused railway walk today and today we're going to be walking on a section of the Dern Valley Railway. And this is the start of another series that I'm doing. So my plans are to follow the Dern Valley Railway as much as I can, all the way through um, to Briley Junction. This is our first time in Doncaster since it officially became a city. So congratulations to Doncaster. The Dern Valley Railway shown here in bright green was completed in 1909 and ran from Black Car Junction, now in the Potterick Car Nature Reserve, in a northwesterly direction towards Briley Junction near Barnsley a distance of around 22 miles. So here's Doncaster on the right hand side and just poking out on the left there is Barnsley. We are going to be telling the story of the railway in the forthcoming episode starting from Doncaster. We've seen the start of our Dern Valley Railway before. Here is the previous section we saw in our pottery car and black car video last year where the line joined the Great Northern and what we now know as the South Yorkshire Joint Railway at St Catharines Junction. Today we'll be looking at the section up to where the railway crosses the River Don on top of the spectacular Coningsborough Viaduct. Primarily intended as a freight line due to the many collieries along the route, however between 1912 and 1951 it did carry passenger trains between Edlington and Wakefield and will pass some of these sites and those stations on our journey. The line was initially operated by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway before eventually falling under the London, Midland and Scottish Railway from 1923. So we've actually been in this location before. So this is White Rose Way, just above us there, you can see. And this fence in here, there's a little, it's not really a tunnel, it's, uh, it's a culvert over the road. Look, you can see, you can see just through to the other end there. Back last December, just under a year ago now, I stood at the other end of that culvert. And that's within the Potterick Car Nature Reserve. So, been inside the reserve about five minutes and I'm already on the track bed of, um, of the first issues line that I've come across. So this was the old Dern Valley Railway. It's just, uh, Track bed goes off in that direction, under what, underneath what's now White Rose Way, goes out of the town. But we can't get through that culvert, as you can see, it's, it's heavily fenced off, but there's really no point, is there really? So we'll carry on, we'll start walking on the track bed uh, in the direction of Edlington. I don't know what we're likely to find today. A um, bit of concrete very early on, possibly a bit of ducting or support for something, I'm not sure. We did see some bits and bobs on the other side of the White Rose Way, didn't we? A couple of posts. Quite a few stumps of telegraph poles I've seen so far. I'll, uh, I'm not gonna bother recording those today unless I see something a little bit more. Dern Valley Railway, bit of a strange one. So we're talking around 1909, it opened. Didn't actually go into Doncaster as such. I mean, as we saw in that Potterick car video, it just kind of joins other lines, it finishes there. Passenger train um, only seemed, from what I can tell, to go as far as Edlington, which is the first stop just outside of Doncaster. Uh, it closed in various stages. I think different sections closed at different times, but passenger trains finished in the 1950s, 1951 to be precise. Served various collieries along the line, which I suppose the majority of railway lines around around this area that was their uh, that was the, their lifeblood really coal and one of the first things we're going to see is the former or we're not going to see because it's not there but where the site of the former yorkshire main collier is just just uh, outside edlington so i believe there was still trains from catherine st catherine's junction um just a pottery car that access the colliery down this uh, down this section of line. So, so the embankment's been 
getting higher and higher you can see there we're a bit of a bit of a drop down there now seems to be marshlands and reed beds either side of the uh, either side of the railway embankment this first bridge we're going to see on the line today we're just coming into civilization i think that's that new housing estate just up between Tesco and White Rose Way. It's a rusty bridge, this one, isn't it? It's underneath that bridge. That's bridge 83. That's the railway sleeper. I can tell you it's a long one as well. It goes all the way over there, look. I said I wasn't gonna film telegraph pole stumps, but in the absence of anything else, there is a telegraph pole stump. Not seen any. Not seen any uh, any tensioners around. But what is this down here? Wow! Oh, that weighs a ton. Look at this. Is this? What's that? Is it something from a line side installation there or is it is it something off a train off a wagon or something there's nothing on it it's got some writing on but it's so corroded I can't see what that says ah oh, fantastic You know what? I'm glad I filmed that telegraph pole now because I would have never have found I would have never have found that down there. Bridge going over the top. Occupation railway bridge. So it's not a network rail or a rail track sign that one, it's actually Doncaster Metropolitan. Borough Council. So it seems to be the theme on this one then. Rusty steel bridges, blue bricks, straight into a cutting. So we've got the, the Tesco on the right hand side of us here, just uh, hidden by the uh, the right hand side of the cutting. That's uh, just by Woodfield Plantation. So bottom end of Bowlby if anyone knows the area. So we're just climbing out of the cutting, the railway cuttings, just down, down the bottom there. But we're coming up just to join the main road. It's the A60 between Doncaster and Tickhill. So what I can gather, this would have been a bridge at one time, going under the A60. I'm guessing it's all been infilled now, because I think this road's been realigned a bit. Indeed it has, so the bridge would have been just here, you can see where the earth's been piled up to the road and this has been widened and the roundabout put in anyway. So that's where we've just walked from, crossing the road, and look at this blue brick, so this looks like it's the other side of the bridge doesn't it? Well definitely is, 100%. If we look down there we can see down infilled obviously still we can see down onto the old track bed yeah we still got the big capping stones and the supports there's a bit of a skewed junction from the road by the looks of things so it's quite a wide it's quite a wide top of the bridge And there's the other side, this is from, uh, from the trap bed side, so this will be looking in the direction of Edlington. All infilled, you can see there quite heavily, isn't it? Just notice this from the side of the trap bed there. A bracket of some uh, some description it's difficult to get through there's still a lot of thorny trees about we've got a big collection of bricks here on the side 
It's down there. Could have been a hut or something, possibly. Another bridge here. Same design. This one's on the map. Um, this is the Springwell Lane Bridge. Same design, isn't it? Blue brick piers. Is it cast iron? If I got my metals right there. So I think this is as far as we can go on this section. Going to be a little bit of a detour now to get back to the trap bed the other side in Edlington. I think there's a bit of private land in between. So that's the that's the A1, A1M Doncaster Bypass to be precise. See, obviously this, this railway, I, I assume, well actually I don't know, I have to check this, but I assumed it, the, uh, the A1M came after the railway had closed, but I really don't know when the A1M opened. We're over the other side of the A1 now, as you can see, it's no longer a, an, uh, an accessible path. Um, so we're heading towards Edlington, Warmsworth. First arch, uh, bridge, brick bridge we've seen, isn't it? Words out there. Alverley Grange Railway Bridge. Nestled away just off the main road here. We're just standing at the banking um, above looking over Broomhouse Lane, so bridge is missing now. But just the other side of the bridge here was one of the junctions into the Yorkshire Main Colliery, which is all this land over this side. climbing back up onto the track bed you'll see there's nothing left of this junction let's have a quick scout up here see if there's anything there's nothing so we're around about where the junction would have been I'll, uh, I'll bring it up on a map now boy it's been landscaped hasn't it the road down there in the main main line where that banking here but looks like there's been some earthworks they are looks like they are doing something there gleason obviously they build homes it says tree protection zone given that pit's been uh, been open in my lifetime i'm guessing there's some people who might be watching this video who used to work there or had relatives that used to work there this would be Lord's Head Lane. I think I've got that right. Peculiar name. Overgrown. So it's a wide track bed. I think for the majority of the Durham Valley Railway it was built as double track, but it only actually had single track. We saw that, didn't we, on uh, on Connors Viaduct the other week. So I'm assuming it's the same situation here. Another blue brick with, uh, with steel top, rusty steel top. Very consistent with the design of bridges, aren't they? So we're just approaching the site of, um, of our first uh, railway station. Now, peculiar, because from what I've seen uh, written on this railway, this was actually the terminus for passenger trains. Now, I don't know if that's true for its entire lifespan, um, as a passenger carry, passenger carrying railway, but uh, but it opened in, uh, in 1912, and it closed to passengers in 1951. Now, I refer to it as Edlington for Bowlby Doncaster. That's what the station uh, was originally known as. But I believe they dropped uh, they dropped the, the Doncaster from the name. I mean, we're not really close to Doncaster, to be honest. I think it's pushing the boundaries a bit if you're getting off a train here. I'm really struggling to see the purpose 
of that passenger service. It lasted a, lasted a lot longer than some of the disused railways um, that we've looked at in the past. Yeah, really strange destination, isn't it, Edlinton? By the 1920s, according to various places online, it was just, they dropped the Bowlby and the Doncaster and just referred to it as it was just called Edlinton. As I've just been explaining, Edlington Station was the easterly terminus on the Dern Valley Railway for passenger trains. This photo shows there was no structure that we would recognise today as a platform, just a bed of old wooden sleepers at track level. That must have been fun in the wet. An old railway coach sufficed as a station building. Opening in 1912, services were formed by a single carriage known as a rail motor, which is presumably what we're seeing in this photograph, hauled by a steam engine. These are the retractable steps down to the track level platform. And it'll be through there. Now we can see um, there's nothing left, but this will be the trap bed. There's a fire station just through there that we'll see in a few moments. We have got some concrete here, a collection of bricks. I don't know how close I can get. It's like some breeze blocks and some bricks, so I'm not quite sure what. What they were for maybe something relating to the colliery we literally stood by the side of the sports ground yorkshire main colliery just there i just i'm just having another little scout down into what would have been the trap bed I and mean, i don't know this could have been where the platforms were i really don't know we've got some some concrete bits and bobs here look scattered around something something was here some kind of structure or there's more on top that looks hollow under there i don't think we're gonna, gonna see much more than that are we and there's the fire stations the trap beds going straight through there So that's the answer, 1985 is closed. I actually thought it was open a lot longer than that. Beautiful old wheel. So where's our fire station? You don't need me to tell you that. Um, so that would be over there, where the track bed would be disappearing into, wouldn't it? Somewhere in here. So we had, like we had two railway lines going over this short spiller road. Right, so we lose the railway. I knew, I knew about this. It goes into uh, an industrial estate. I don't think we're going to get much luck going in that direction. Right, bit of a slow burner this one. I do admit that. Um, I'm going to go to the top end now, top end of Wormsworth, and uh, we've got a bit of a big finish. So see you up there. Line of fence posts down here, so I'm just driven up about half a mile. Um, the railway line goes round the back of this industrial estate, so we lose it for a bit. But interesting, this road here is called the name of the road is called Wormsworth Halt, and this is built on the alignment of the old. Oh, what was the name? What was the name of the railway company? Hullam Barnsley and great central joint i think i've got that right um this is that line that i did that explore on from uh, from doncaster york road station uh, from bentley through uh, through to wormsworth um last september a year last september now if you remember that line although it had stations built didn't actually open for uh, for passenger trains but i believe somewhere along this road i'm not quite sure exactly where was uh, warms with halt and i believe that would have just been a good station it wasn't wasn't a passenger service so yeah not related to the dern valley railway that's that's just up ahead of us we'll we'll join up with that in a minute but i thought it was just a, a little bit of a interesting link it's to another video so here's a map of the area edlington slash warms with now we're stood just there Wormsworth Halt. Now that's a road that serves this um, industrial area. And we can see Wormsworth Goods Station just up at the top right hand side there. 
Centre right is the Edlington Halt that we've just been looking at. And we can see the Green Dern Valley line there just brushing along the south side of that industrial estate. And we've not been able to walk along that. But we can pick up the alignment of the track bed now just west of Wormsworth. But just before we do move on, we can see there is another line there going north to south along our map. Now this is another line into the Yorkshire Main Colliery and it was from that Hull and Barnsley and Great Central Joint. And if we just pull up that photograph again from Edlington Holt, we can see that line going over the top of our Dern Valley Railway. Connie's Brett, that might be a little clue on where we're heading now. Just looking at the map, so right where we get to the end of this yard on this side is where we had our uh, line back to uh, Doncaster York Road Station and up through Bentley. This is so we're probably walking on the alignment for that now. That we've just come down Wormsworth Halt. Oh, we're too far in that direction because that's not the way we're going. We're going just off to the left here. This path ducks down, so that must have got underneath this line. It's hard to know what's fly tipping. There's something here that's been been demolished. I mean there's the springs from settees or mattresses or whatever they are. There's a lot of rubble. Some gate posts there. Could have been a, another hut or something. Plenty more of these piles of bricks. Line side again. Reinforced concrete. It's like roof tiles or something there. We've got a brick here. Something on there. Let's move away the moss. Let's say Kilnurst, Kilnurst Bricks, Kilnurst Brickworks. We are climbing up quite noticeably now, heading up towards the road in front. I can't remember the name of the road, is it Sheffield Road? Runs between Warnsworth and Conisborough. Now I know this used to be a cutting. We're dropping down into the cutting now, at last. to go underneath Sheffield Road. Just had a look on the map, it is Sheffield Road. And here's the cutting. Wow, I've been over that road so many times, I didn't know it was, didn't know it was so deep down here. It's obviously had a lot of re-strengthening work done on that bridge. I cannot believe how high that is. bricks down the bottom there, that retaining wall. Yeah, same on this side, look. In fact, I'd go as far as saying, a lot of that bridge looks like it's been, not well, replaced the right word, but look, those bricks look immaculate. They've been repointed. Is this new reinforced Concrete down the side there. Now there was a bridge, literally just yards from the end of the viaduct, according to this map. I wonder if those bricks have something to do with that. There's definitely some kind of path coming down here that possibly went straight over at one at one time. So I got home and I had a look at this photograph, an old photograph of Connorsborough Viaduct, and you can see that bridge just at the end of the viaduct there. It looks like it's just a footbridge. However, something else just struck me as I was looking at this photograph. Now look at the top and you can see that bridge. Now that's the arch bridge that we've just walked under. And as you can clearly see, that's not an arch bridge on this photograph. So it looks like at some stage the bridge has been replaced or made into that large arch bridge that we saw. Here we are. So I was here a couple of weeks ago, a couple of videos ago, I put out an, uh, an explorer of uh, Connorsborough Viaduct. So I'm not gonna go all the way over and film the viaduct again. I'll just leave the link to that one. 
it's slightly different weather conditions today slightly muddier actually now it was a horrific day that day you wouldn't really come if you knew if it was going to be as bad as that but let's go and have a, a little butchers Know the charming graffiti from the Leeds United fans. 1976. That engraving on there. I'll just go as far as the uh, of the steel section in the middle. Get a lot better views today. So here we are coming onto that central steel section. It was only a few weeks ago I edited that video and I put together all the all the facts and things and I can't remember how many arches long or any of the dimensions. So just a brief recap, 22 brick arches and one metal span. The girder span sits around 35 metres above the River Don. This section of line closed in 1966, but I won't give much more away in case I see with the pleasure and surprise when watching the Connors provide up video. That's the River Don down there. That's looking a lot fuller than when me and Paul came and walked down here. It's not far off the path that, and there's a lot more water in that field. We've had a lot of rain. Yeah, so if you're over that side, it's looking over to Connorsborough Castle. We were stood. We were stood in that field, just there taking photographs, right where that, that humongous puddle is. So, Tara from Conisborough Viaduct, look out for part two. I don't know when that'll be, but it shouldn't be too long. So until then, cheers for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.